Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. It's always funny Welcome. when we just start um, a session because we admit all right away and then it just floodgates yes. open. <laughs> so that's fun. And you see all these names in the pictures. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. Hello, hello. If you're just joining, welcome. I know it takes a second to set up the mic, the audio, the whole nine. It's good to see you, though. Hello. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome. If this is your first Zoom in it, you're catching live. Welcome. Special hello to you. It's good to see you. I'm happy right. to see the usuals. We're happy to see new people. We're happy to see everyone. Yes, it's so good to see so many people. Oh, I see some friends, multiple people in the camera. Aw, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. nice. I haven't seen that before, I think. Oh, yes. I... Yeah. You have to go to, like the second page and on. Yep. Oh, it's so fun. Knitting's great, but knitting with a friend, that's even better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome to everybody just joining. Hello. Hello. Yes, feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, oh, it's somebody second in along and their birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. To Kristen. <laughs> we decided to celebrate by having cast on day just for you. <laughs> yes, we knew. <laughs> I wish we knew. I've been knitting all day. Oh, that is, that's honestly my ideal birthday. Yes, just... I know, right? A nice day for me just to knit. <laughs> oh, hello from Belgium. Hello. Feel free to put in the chat where you're coming in from. It's always nice to see. Yes. I've got a big big community here and it's cool to see where we're all reaching out from international hello hello if you're just joining welcome <laughs> it's good to see you hello yep we still have people coming on in yep we'd like to give it just a little bit for everyone to filter in you know get cozy <laughs> oh I my goodness lots of places i see <gasps> alabama colorado vermont south carolina canada Oh on vacation okay, in Colorado. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh my gosh. Maine. We've Brazil. got everyone on the map. Hello. <laughs> hot and Thank humid you. Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, yeah. I know it's a hot one out there. Hello, hello. If you're just joining, welcome. Welcome to our Zoom in it. Hello. <laughs> I see well, so I many see. people. Oh, this is great. Hello. There's one in particular I like. It says Whidbey Island, Washington, in the middle of Puget Sound. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. A, ma a place so magical you take a ferry to get here. Oh, <laughs> magical indeed. Oh, hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. I think we can go ahead and get started. Does that sound Yes, I think we've got show? a good, good number of people ready to go. Yes, awesome. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight us so you can see us. Um, let me go ahead and do that just so you can see who you're talking to here. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I'm going to add our team. There we go. Okay. So hi, everybody. My name is Margaret. I am the social media and outreach coordinator here at Pearl Soho. And this is our cast on day zoom in it for the double thick pot holder. Woohoo. So I am joined today by my co-host, Jaja. She's our customer service manager. Hi, ja. <laughs> I usually do a little dance and I noticed I started doing it when you said Margaret and then I stopped and yes. like, oh, I'm not Margaret. <laughs> you can Jaja. dance for me. I'll accept it. <laughs> okay, there we go. And, and then we also have just from our fulfillment team, we have Gianna from our design team, Allie from our e-commerce team, and Kat from our customer service team. And dance is for everybody. Yes, <laughs> they will be they're helping. like up and down. <laughs> <laughs> they will be helping to moderate in the chat. So if you have any questions throughout the Zoom in it, feel free to put your questions in the chat. They'll be replying to you there as best they can. And if they decide your question would be better for our Q&A session later, we'll save it for later and we'll make sure to answer it. So feel free to interact with us in the chat. It's exciting to see everybody. Oh, I see Olga in the chat. Hi, Olga. Hi, Olga. <laughs> oh, so good to have you here. Um, yeah, so thanks for being here. I think Jaja was going to tell us about a pretty cool yeah. statistic. The first, first thing I wanted to talk about is like, can you believe this is our fifth call? Fifth yes. knit along. Five knit alongs. This has been so fun. We did the uh, lightweight raglan pullover, the bandana cowl, the prison blanket, the dumpling bag, and now we are here. Yes. <laughs> That's a double thick potholder. 
So and we've got a we're going strong thanks to people like you guys. I yes. was really touched the last time we ended it, and people were right away asking, "What's the next one? What's the next one?" So yes. I'm really happy to see. Oh, someone's dancing with me. Yes, Kimberly <laughs> Richie, I love it. We love the energy. We love having you guys. We enjoy when people are just knitting along, literally with us as we're doing this, and so. We, we really appreciate the experience and you guys sharing it with us and joining us. Yeah, and these these pot holders are really great, especially because you there's so many uses for them. You can um, use them underneath a hot bowl of soup. You can bring them to a uh, cookout and put them underneath something hot on the counter. They're just fantastic, and it's hard to make just one of them. Um, mm -hmm. But in our sun shower cotton, they're extra special. I just love this yarn. It's such a soft cotton. It's so unique to most other cottons that you'll knit with. Um, the colors too are just so beautiful and unique. The like stippled color, it's like, you know, like a brush stroke to, to paint. Yeah, it's almost like natural knitting. painting, like watercolor to me. Yes. <laughs> some of it's, them are more watercolored and soft. Some almost have like speckles, like somebody splattered it with a paintbrush. They're right? really cool. <laughs> and then the, the names too are so fun, like corn on the cob. is like, that's just so aptly named. I just love it. Yes. <laughs> I really want to take a picture with some porn on it at some point. Oh, you totally should. <laughs> awesome. I know these are also great for gifting, gift giving. Um, mm -hmm. is the holidays are right around the corner or just for a close friend. Um, yeah, I yeah. feel like it's already kind of wedding seasons coming up, housewarmings, my sister. Um, that's actually who I made the corn and the cob for. I feel like just the, honestly, the gift knit alongs are the ones that are my favorites because I can make a whole bunch of them. Admittedly, I feel like I don't finish the ones where um, the longer projects, I still have to finish my prison blanket, but I swear <laughs> I will by the end of the year. I'll hold but you to just, that. Yes, thank you. I'm going to, got to get that UGC, user generated content. Right. <laughs> um, I just really like giving these. I plan to give a set to my sister who's getting married. Um, really happy for her just to like have a run in her house. And I, We'll talk about it later, but just ideas that you can use or some extra yarn that you have too. I think I'm going to make some towels to go along with it. It's just, it's so versatile. Like you can do so much. It's just yeah. perfect for that person, special person that you love in your life. Yeah, exactly. You love in your life. <laughs> or even good for like teachers, you know, or just like easy mm -hmm. gifts. They're, they're just fantastic. So whether you keep a bunch for yourself or a bunch to give away, <laughs> they're a great project, but we're going to cover pretty much everything you need to know to knit one of these. So um, we're going to talk about the cable cast on today and garter stitch in the round. We're also going to talk about the three needle bind off, making the hanging loop at the top and then um, whip stitch as well. So pretty much all the steps that you would encounter in this project we're going to talk about. Um, so you have everything you need to know to really feel confident to uh, work this project. So um, we're also going to have a Q&A session, as I mentioned earlier, and a show and, time, show and tell time um, so we can see your projects. If you've started already and want to show us what you're working on, we can uh, see you then. So that'll be great. Okay. Someone's asking, do you know how long the session will be? They tend to be about an hour, in case you're curious. Um, that's about when we start to cap it and wind down. Um, yeah. And as you can kind of tell, I'm, I have my eye on the chat, but just uh, forementioned for I uh, wanted to mention for anybody that's new or just hasn't been on the, one of these in a while, but if I'm not constantly keeping an eye on the chat, and that's what we have our trusted moderators for. So if you have any questions, they'll try to answer it sooner rather than later. But for the more technical ones, they're going to put them in a section at the end that I will review, and we'll talk about it that way as we get to the uh, Q&A section towards the end. Oh, yep. sorry. One more thing I want to mention. Yes. If you, the whole point of <laughs> doing that, um, I it's better if you direct something to everyone in the chat. I believe that's the default. Sometimes people will direct message to myself or Margaret. But we're not usually able to see that or answer it right away. So if you have a question, I recommend putting it to everyone so that you can get an answer again sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, we're also recording this session for anyone who couldn't join us live. We'll be posting this on our YouTube channel so anyone can review it. It's a great resource as you work. Um, and so if you don't wish to be recorded, you can turn off your camera and mute yourself um, but yeah, I think that we're ready to go. We can get started. We can jump right in. So yes, let's do the demos. We got to do some little logistics here, switch everything around. And I'm going to switch to my document camera and we're going to start talking about the cable cast on. It is my spotlight. It is cast on day after all. So that's a good place to start. All right. 
So there we go. All right. So first thing up on the list, we are going to talk about the cable cast on. So this is how you start the project. And I have a little sample here for later, just to get an idea. This uh, pot holder is knit like a little pouch. So what we're doing for the cable cast on is casting along, casting on around this uh, circumference right here. So what we're gonna do is, this is a very fun cast on. Sometimes you'll use it in the middle of a project to add more stitches, um, but you can also use it to start a project like we're doing here. So this cast on starts pretty much like most cast ons where you make a, a slip knot. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah, this is the first time I used it at the beginning of a project. It was really interesting. Oh yeah. I know I use it a lot for like the underarms of a sweater. That's usually when I'll see it. Bridge a gap there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have our slip knot on our needle, pretty standard. But the fun part of this is that right away you get to start using the slip knot. So we're gonna flip the needle around with the slip knot on our left needle. And what we're gonna do is insert our right needle into this stitch, just like we would if we were usually knitting with it. So just to answer somebody's question real quick, does yes. Oh, thank you, Kat. Yes. Um, does the slip <laughs> knot count as stitch one? Yes. The slip yes, knot it does. The first, the first stitch. So another good trick with this cast on is to just be a little bit more loose than you normally would um, to kind of looser tension just to help make sure everything works on the needles and doesn't get too tight because it can get pretty frustrating <laughs> if you get a little mm -hmm. too tight. So definitely, you know, think more relaxed thoughts as you're doing this cast on. <laughs> so we're going to insert our needle just like we would if we're knitting with it. And then we're going to take our wrap or our working yarn and wrap that right around our needle. And then we'll pull through just like usual. And then what we're going to do is instead of sliding this stitch off the needle, what we're going to do is we're going to put this stitch that we just pulled up this loop back on this needle. So we're just going to go like so, loop it on our needle, just like that. So now we have two stitches on our needle. So we have the slip knot and the first stitch that we just cable cast it on. So the first stitch for the cable cast on is a little unique where you go into the stitch as if you would when you're knitting. However, for future, uh, all, all future stitches, I believe we have to cast on 96 for this. Yes. All future stitches, thank you. <laughs> what we're going to do is insert our right needle in between these two stitches. So what we're gonna do is just thread the needle directly through them. We're not splitting the loop at all like we would for a knit stitch. We're just sliding the needle right between it. I'm gonna focus my camera a little bit to see if it helps. There we go. Okay, so we thread our needle through directly between the stitches and same thing, we're gonna wrap our yarn around, yarn over as they say, and then pull this loop through. And then again, instead of sliding this stitch off, we're gonna put this loop back on the needle. So I'm gonna insert it just like that. All right, so now we have three stitches and you can see that if I'm getting a little tight here, there's not gonna be much room for me to insert my needle here and really, really thrive there. So you can kind of tug on your stitch a little bit to help give yourself some extra room. Yeah, I saw someone in the comments mentioned that they like to use a crochet hook. I haven't tried that, but I feel like it would definitely help you if you just can't help but be too tight in this section. Yes, yep. Sometimes that would help or you could use a slightly larger needle for your right needle. Um, like you could you could size up one, um, which that also helps to, you know, create a little bit more tension for, to work with. So just to do this one more time, we're gonna insert our needle between the most recent two stitches right there. Wrap our working yarn around. Pull the loop through. And then we're just going to slip it right on. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to twist it like that. We're just going to slip it directly back on. And that creates a nice, like almost like a little scalp or like a very even uh, <laughs> border along the bottom. Nice, nice solid loops, um, which these will be the loops, just to think a couple steps ahead here. These will be the loops that we're using for whip stitch later on. So. That's um, I just someone has thinking. an interesting tip that I like to see. Um, it was 
Lisa, and she said it helps to put the needle between, oh, moved it. <laughs> it helps to put the needle between needle and loop before pulling loop tight. It keeps it consistent and not too tight. Um, I agree. I feel like that's something that I also like to, before pulling it, that's something that's helpful. Also appreciate the little comments here because yes. <laughs> um, that's something I've noticed on YouTube once it gets posted afterward, now people can't see the chat. So I just wanted to say it out loud while people are commenting in the chat. Great thinking. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to repeat this process until you have your whole, pretty much all your needles covered. Um, and you're going to have 96 stitches. So once you do that, your needles will look like this. Where we have all the stitches cast on. Let me get untangled here. And when you're counting your stitches, you are going to count this most recent, like overlapping loop. This stitch right here is separate from this stitch right here. That's <laughs> just a little trick. Sometimes I was I would skip over and count this as one mm -hmm. because it looked the same. Nope, this is one, then two stitches together. So anyway, we have our 96 stitches. We are ready to join in the round. So we're gonna grab our stitch marker and we are going to position ourselves to join the round. So maybe this is your first knit along or your first joining in the round project, or you're not sure how to do this. So we wanted to review how to join the round just so that you can feel extra confident for this step. So what and you're going to do- There are multiple oh. ways to do this. This is just yes. <laughs> Margaret's preferred way. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It's knitter's choice. That's my new favorite phrase. <laughs> yes. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow this ridge all the way around and make sure it doesn't twist. For example, this is what it would look like if there was a twist in it. You don't want that because then your stitches will be uh, twisted throughout the project. So what we're going to do is we're going to untwist, just move the stitches back around so that ridge is nice and lined up. And it does actually really help as like a tangible reminder just to trace it. Like it's just a nice, it, I mean, it feels nice. It's nice soft yarn. <laughs> so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our stitch marker, put that on our right needle, which is where our working yarn is coming from. Let me get detangled yes, there. You wanna make sure your working yarn's on the right. That's something I yeah. forget to. If um, this, you're doing a long tail cast on, it's gonna look different. That's why hers is her tail for where she started is also on that side. Yeah. Um, so for the cable cast on, the short end will be on the left and the working yarn will be on the right for this project. Yes, very good point. So we have our working yarn on the right hand side, our tail on the left from the cable cast on, and we're going to thread our stitch marker on the needle. And then I like to grab my working yarn and kind of get it in my position here. And then again, making sure we didn't twist anything, what you'll do is the first round is to knit. So we're going to insert our needle right here as if to knit into the first stitch. And there we go, we're flying. You just start knitting. And you've successfully joined in the round. You just keep going. Easy as that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for the longest, I feel like I used to lock the first and the last stitch over. Some people add, add on an extra stitch and knit two together. But honestly, you can just start knitting. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It is attached. And when you come to the stitch marker in the next rounds, what you'll do is you'll just slip it. It, you would just be right on your needle, just slip it from one needle to the next. You don't knit into it or anything. You just slip it and there you go. And that moves up with you through the work so that you always have this reference for the beginning around. Because you might be thinking, oh, okay, I have this tail here. This tail is always going to tell me where the beginning of around is. Well, once you're, you know, four and a half inches up, it might look a little different. You might be like, oh, wait, is it over here or is it over there? So that's why we like to use a stitch marker just to make sure we're nice and specific of where the beginning is. But yeah, so you've joined in the round, you're rolling, you're rocking, the whole thing. <laughs> and so the next thing is this, the next thing I want to discuss is that this is um, knit in garter stitch in the round, which creates a really nice ridged fabric. Um, you have these lovely garter ridges, which are extra great and textural and really nice. Um, Garter stitch knit flat is knitting back and forth, but garter stitch in the round is knitting and then purling. Um, so at every time you see this stitch marker, it's a nice little reminder that you need to switch from knit to purl. 
or from Perl to knit. Um, so that's just a, something to do. So when you, when you come to the stitch marker and you've been knitting, and I'm going to demonstrate this just right here, but this will always occur at the stitch marker. Um, you're going to take your yarn, let's say you're, you've been knitting, and now the next row you're going to purl. You're going to take your working yarn and move it between your needles to the front so that you're ready to purl. Now, one thing to watch is that you don't move it over the needle because then you're creating an extra stitch. You just want to move it between the needles. So we're just moving it from the back to the front. And then when you're purling and it's time to go knit again, you move it from the front to the back. So that always happens at the stitch marker, but I wanted to mention that while we were here. Um, there are, sorry, there are two questions I want to answer just yeah. since we're in this section. Um, oh, okay. I uh, can't answer that, but someone had a question <laughs> about knitting continental style. If that should change, it will not change. Um, well, the question was, if you knit continental, does it change which side the working yarn should be on? It does not. Um, it should still be on the right side. So thank you for answering that. Yeah. And this one I really wanted to mention was um do you end on a purl stitch or a knit stitch when you get to five inches or rather a purl row or a knit row um you're going to repeat just two simple rows um rounds when you're doing this pattern um knit and purl um you're going to want to end on a purl row and the same reason is another question that amy had earlier is why not do the long tail cast on do you mind if i talk about this briefly um Margaret? absolutely let's let's flop there we go. Yes. So we don't have um, a sample of this right now, but the reason you don't want to do a long tail cast on for this project is because you go straight into a knit round as the start of your repeat repeats. And if you go from a long tail cast on to knit, oh, sorry. Yes. Long tail to knit. You're going to get what looks like a stockinette a single round of stock and net, and it's not going to look like a seamless garter the whole way through. So the cable cast on actually simulates the edge that would be the neatest for that transition. Um, and we also recommend it because you don't have to worry about recasting on over and over and you'll can adjust right away how long of a tail to have. Um, and similarly, when you end, you do the three needle bind off when you're ending. And so you wanna do this after a pearl row in order to have the style that's consistent with the way our samples look. Yeah, if you think about it, the, the three needle bind off is a knit row. So you want to yes. end with a pearl row right before it so that you continue the knit pearl, knit pearl flow. Yes. So that's how I like to remember it of just whatever the opposite is, that's what we're doing next. Yes. I also see a question. Any tips for not twisting when joining using longer circular needles? Um, I assume you're asking about longer than the needles for this project. My best tip is really to just trace it, lay it out flat on a table and trace it with your finger. Um, there's also a really rare opportunity that you get after the first round. So let's say I've knit all the way around. When you get to your stitch marker again, you can dip your needle under the work and undo the twist, but you can only do that on the first round. So that's a, a tutorial. I think we briefly demonstrate one of our first knit along uh, Zoom and knits. So we'd yes. have to do some digging to find exactly ago. the point. <laughs> but um, yes, that is something that you can do it after that first round only. If you need um, any additional help untwisting it, um, you can always reach out to us either by email um, at customer service at pearlsoho.com or knit along at pearlsoho.com. Yep. And we also have our free one-on-one -on -one project help session. So you can sign up for that too, just so you can get a visual if that's helps for your project specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you don't have to go digging into the archives for <laughs> how to undo the twist. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you'll work that re repeat of round one knit, round two purl. Um, you'll work that, I believe it's like 21 times, um, 21 more times. Um, and then it'll be time to do a three needle bind off. So what you'll have right before the three needle bind off is just a big loop and the three needle bind off will close that top edge of the loop. So Jaja is going to take us through that. Oh, it's already time. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to switch over to my camera. So if you were in the dumpling bag knit along, I actually demonstrated the same thing there. And so we're gonna do it again, just because I'm so familiar with it. <laughs> but, sorry, just moving the chat window so I can see this a little easier. There you go. There we go. I have my little stitch stoppers to make sure we keep it 
So I've got my um, five inches right here. I ended on a purl route. You can kind of see the difference between a purl. Well, I don't have a knit one set up, but you'll have the purl ridges. If it wasn't knit round, it would look more like a, actually, it would look like a, like a V if you pull it down. But um, right now it's already set and ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I've got my 96 stitches in the round. I've got my cable cast on. Um, I'm not gonna bother with putting a marker in the middle just because there aren't that many. And also we're gonna go work to, I think the last two in order to make our um, hanging loop. So yep. we're gonna go ahead and start. Three needle bind off, three is in the name. That's because we need literally three needles. So I have my spare needle right here, double pointed. Um, I like to just keep it on the circular needle. I have the 16 inch. It's a little bigger than that, as you can see. So it's really <laughs> ready to kind of pop off and slide. So you want to hold it carefully. Um, but you hold it same way as it was in the round where it's just wrong side parallel to each other facing on the inside. You'll want your working yarn in the back. Um, I am a continental knitter, so I'm just going to hold it with my left hand. If you're English, you would hold it with your right. However you like to tension it. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm just my tone is a little, a little no, you're like good, Joey. <laughs> so what you're I like good, to Joshua. do, <laughs> thank you, mm -hmm. come in from the bottom as I would for regular knit stitch. Sorry, the sun's glaring a little bit. And then I also want to make sure I get this second one in the back before making a loop or bringing anything off. But this is safely through both stitches now. I'm going to wrap my yarn around as if I'm doing a regular knit stitch. And I'm going to pull it through both of these and take these two off the needles. And that's one stitch. But we're not done since this is a bind off. If you were continuing, you could just do them all. But you're going to need at least two to bind off something. So I'm going to do it again. We've got front needle, back needle, wrap around, pull it through, and off. Now that we have two stitches on this spare third needle, we can bind it off as you normally would. We don't have to do two stitches there. You can just pass that stitch over and you've got one bound off. So I'm gonna do it a couple more times. I like to, since I'm just doing it for demonstration, I'm doing it really just one at a time. But when you get used to it, I like to hold it here to keep the previous ones from sliding off, just be, especially because I'm using metal needles. I feel like cotton really just slips <laughs> on metal. So holding everything together with my thumb. If it does slip off, it's not the end of the world. You can pick it up. You can always fix it. And there you go. You can just kind of do it all, all in one if you're more comfortable. Easy peasy. We just bind off. I usually use my front needle to do the bind off. It's a little easier for me. You might find maybe the back is more comfortable for you. But we're starting to have this little seam right here that's really interesting. It puckers a little bit, but I kind of I really like the design personally. But this is the section that I'm making, what will become the thing you'll bind off. And so it's kind of raised, but it's really easy for putting it in half if you're going to grab something out of the microwave. Yeah, it kind of like creases up for you. So you're like automatically ready to go to grab it, <laughs> you know, okay. kind of fold it in half. Exactly. Well, I'm going to continue my three needle bind off off camera while Margaret's doing the end of the three needle bind off into the hanging loop section. So I'm going to keep going this way while Margaret's talking. Well, not um, while well, Margaret's doing yeah. this other end. I also... Oh. Oh, on the question, ahead. on the back needle, are you inserting the needle into the back of the stitch? Nope. I'm doing it into the front the same way. So let's really like open it up. So here's the front. Oops, oh, sorry. Here's the front. Here's the back stitch. I'm going from the bottom. It's just like two knit stitches. Yeah, it's kind of like a knit two together, except your two stitches are on two needles. They're like stacked. Yes, exactly. Uh, but yes, so Margaret, feel free to pin yourself and I will yep. pin <laughs> or on spotlight. There we go. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about one thing I see in my notes. I wanted to talk about it, but I forgot to. I was going to say, let's say you've packed this project with you to go like to the beach or you set it down for something and then you wanted to pick it back up later and you're wondering 
oh, where did I leave off? Is the next row or next round a pearl or is it a knit? I wanted to show. Oh, yes. Let me. I did want to show that. Thank you. Yep. Let's switch over to my document camera real quickly. I just wanted to show how to remember where you're at because it can be kind of disorienting and you want to make sure you do the right thing <laughs> so you don't get lost. So the best way to know is when you set your project down and then you pick it back up, you're going to look at the last stitch that you worked on your right needle. No matter where you are, you're going to look at it. And if the yarn, the working yarn is coming off the back of your work, that means this stitch was just knit. So regardless of what, what's coming, you know that you just knit a stitch. So if I was to pick up my project right here where this project is right now, I would know, okay, keep on knitting. It's time to go. But let's say you stopped like one stitch after your stitch marker so that you would keep that stitch marker on your needles. And you're like, oh no, where, where was I? What was I doing? If your working yarn is off the back of the work, you are knitting. And if it's coming off the front of the work, like that, but it would actually be hanging from this, um, you would uh, be purling. That, that would have meant you, your last stitch, most recent stitch was a purl. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing I wanted to mention. So now when you get to the end of the three needle bind off, you're going to leave two stitches. So I have my little pouch here. It opens up on this side. And here's that three needle bind off along the top. This is where cast on point right there. Okay. So we're over here and we have two stitches left because we're going to do a cable cast on again. And if you remember, the cable cast on likes having two stitches so you can insert your needle between them. So what you're going to do, you can insert your needle, just like we talked about a little bit ago, you insert your needle between these two stitches and then take your working yarn, wrap it around your needle, pull that loop through, and then we're going to slide it right back onto this needle. So same thing. And this is where you actually get to use the cable cast on in the middle of a project. So these two stitches are going to look a little intertwined and that's normal. Um, and then what you're going to do is just keep doing this so that you have 26 total stitches. So you'll have two that were already here and 24 that you uh, continue doing. So as I do that, I see a question in the chat. What would I do if I didn't want a hanging loop? This would be a great place to take those last two stitches and just continue binding off. So taking the second stitch up over the first and then pulling your working yarn through that uh, last stitch. And then you can weave in the end as normal and then continue on to the whip stitch. All right. I also see a question about counting rows. Mm -hmm. I can demonstrate that in just a second, but let me get my stitches all cast on here. I also know that sometimes it helps to just see this in action just over and over again. So I figured let's just do this all live. Let's make our hanging loops together. We can like literally knit along. Yeah. <laughs> How fun. I'm still doing mine off. Well, <laughs> still doing my bind off, but I took it off the camera, so I'm not hunched over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'll come back around because we're knitting along literally this time. Yes. And, oh, that's a fun thing. If this is your first Zoom and knit with us, we know a lot of people will cast on right at the beginning and then we'll <laughs> see how much you've done by the end. That's kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> I've seen, seen people make some very far progress. Right? It's just impressive. All right. We've actually so. been, we've also been getting a lot of questions about um how long does it take to make this? I feel like on average, about oh. two days is how yeah. long it's take, taken me. And that's just knitting casually just afterwards. Not like two know. days dedicated knitting the yeah. whole time. <laughs> yeah, like if, I, if I, I could do it in a single day if I really wanted to, if I felt like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I don't think we're at 20 yet. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, we've got 10 more to go. Mm -hmm. I see a question here. The two stitches before you started the loop was on two different needles. Did you move them to a single needle? Yes, you'll reposition those so that they are on one needle, I think, right? Or will you have, maybe Jacques can confirm. I, I, I kept it on my, so I used my circular needles and the double crochet right. needle. When I got to the last two, I kept it on my circular needle. Yeah, so it's not so much like moving it to a different needle, it's just moving it back around along the cord. 
just so that it's all there together. I definitely want to double check that it's two and not. It is two, yeah. It is two, thank you. Yeah. Four, six, eight, ten. Just going to also make sure the pattern is in front of me. Right. There we go, 21. Two. And you can adjust this if you want a bigger or smaller hanging loop, of course. Yeah, I feel like the 24 is pretty generous, but I kind of like it because sometimes, you know, there'll be hooks that are really big. Yeah. Um, yeah or to get it, it over. Too big and too small. Yeah. Right. Or to give it, get it over a doorknob, you know, or like oh, a little yes. drawer pull. Wherever you want to keep it. Okay. There we go. We've got our stitches all lined up. So next step is we are just going to bind these stitches right off. So we're not going to knit with them at all. We're just going to bind them right off. And because you're already set up with the working yarn right here, you don't need to flip your work or anything. You can just keep going. So here's just to kind of remember where we were. We have our big pouch with the opening at the bottom and we've got our hanging loop stitches cast on. So next step, we take the other side of our uh, circular needle here and then we're gonna kind of separate our stitches just to make sure we know what, what's what here. And insert our needle and we're just going to knit that first stitch just like normal slide that off Oop, there we go do the second one this is just a basic knit bind off yet yeah. whoop there we go <laughs> and then we'll take the the first stitch and slide it up over the second stitch so just like so and then we'll just repeat that whole process all the way down our stitches and this will create a nice little hanging loop. It's also just a fun technique to have in your toolbox as a knitter. If you ever want to make like a cool little hanging loop on something, you know, now you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one's really interesting because I feel like I normally see um, an I-cord loop, but this was a really cool one where it's um, instead yeah. of an I-cord loop, it's it's all built in, you know? Right. It will cast on and immediately bind off. I feel like it's extra thick too because of yes. the way it comes back around. I see a question asking how many rounds before binding off. Um, I don't know that exact answer, but I do know that you repeat the 24. knit one, pearl <laughs> one, <laughs> knit, knit one round, pearl one round, 21 more times. We're told 22 times. So, or you can just measure for five inches. That's what I do. <laughs> and the five inches is important because you yes uh need it to be able to close it <laughs> yes um you might not have enough to close it if it's not quite five inches which i will demonstrate that in just a second how we go from this pouch to a like potholder shape like <laughs> the finished you know shape that we're we're looking for i was so surprised the first time because even as you know i was looking ahead at the pattern Okay, it makes sense. I yeah. finished my loop and it was flat and I went, huh. And then I folded it and went, oh. Yes, <laughs> it's such a magic moment. <laughs> it was much bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> yes. No, these are a really great size. I love mine. I use mine all the time for, like I said, a hot bowl of soup or to put on a table before putting a hot dish on it or on the counter. Or I saw someone in the chat earlier say like as a hostess gift. I thought that's such a great idea. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I would love if someone came to my house. Right? <laughs> brought me one, one of these. And I am using the color cherry tomato, which I thought was so fun. I kind of went with a red, white, and blue color scheme just for fun summer <laughs> colors. So I had sea spray, which was the blue earlier, and then heirloom white, and now cherry tomato. All right, so we're almost, oh, whoopsies. There we go. You're okay. Almost down the line. Knitting with people watching is like entirely different. I tell you. Oh yeah, it really is. <laughs> One day maybe we should pick an unlucky volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. All right. So we're we would, almost. We would not do that to you. We guys. would not do that. No. <laughs> oh, one thing to call out here: there is like a normal large gap there. That this is one of the last bound off stitches before all the cable cast on stitches. So that that gap is normal. Yes. Um, but this is our last one. So we'll pull that off. 
and slipped it over. And now we can kind of pull that loop out and take our scissors and cut. So I like to leave a longer tail here. I believe our pattern says an eight inch tail, but you can do whatever works best for you. I like to leave a little bit of yarn because I'm going to use that to sew the other end of the loop to the pot holder. So I'm going to leave a pretty generous amount, just especially for demonstration, but also for practicality. And then we'll pull our yarn through here, our tail, just like normal. There we go. And now we have our pouch with the <laughs> not quite yet constructed hang loop. <laughs> so, um, yes. So next step is I wanted to talk about the construction real quick because you have a couple options here. You could go to work the whip stitch or you could um, sew your hanging loop together. So if you wanted to, just to have all the information, the way that this is constructed is I'm arranging the three needle bind off along the left-hand side with the hanging loop that we just made at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is open this like a book. And as you open it, it suddenly creates this the shape where you have an oval right here going perpendicular to the bind off right here. I'm going to demonstrate the whip stitch in a little bit, but first I just wanted to show how this comes together so that you can understand what to do as you're weaving in your ends, because you may want to uh, secure the other side of this loop so you can weave in this end on the inside of the work. Or similarly, the tail from casting on, you want, might want that to be on the inside of your work. So I'm going to demonstrate how to secure the other end of this loop so that you can weave this into the other end of the work or into the inside of the work. Um, but yeah, so let's see. I see a question. Could you also pick up a stitch from the end of the hanging loop and knit them together? That's a great idea. I, I think that would be super you cool. Could, and I'd yes. try that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is now this, there is really no rhyme or reason here. This is using your knitting knowledge to <laughs> really find the way that works best for you that feels the most secure. So I'm going to find my needle here and thread that on just like so. Okay, now we're going to take a look at this. We're just going to see what we've got going on to kind of make some decisions. So I have my loop <laughs> going around like this. Well, you know, sometimes you want to make sure it gets oriented in a way that really feels natural to the yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like with this one, I kind of followed it around to the left, maybe. And this one seems to like going also to the left or maybe to the right. I like the right. So we're going to do the right. So. I'm going to take this this end here and the first thing I want to do is secure this down so you don't have this bump kind of coming up. So I'm going to thread my needle. I've got to turn this just a little bit because we're upside down here, but I'm going to thread this. Oh, I don't know, maybe down through here. Yeah, I, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what I did for mine. <laughs> right. Do you see that now? We're going to cinch it. <laughs> yes, exactly. So now that's that's not protruding there. So that's kind of secured. And then what I want to do is, like we did with joining in the round, we're going to kind of follow this around and make sure that it's nice and flat. Um, these kind of have a mind of their own, like you've been seeing. So it's nice to make sure they're all secure. And then I'm going to look at the end of this here. And I see I'm going to find some loops to grab. Maybe I could grab like that. So if I insert my needle right here on one side and then maybe on the other side, just to kind of go through that loop. You can kind of see I went through that V. I'll thread that on. Nice and taut. Yeah. Oh, and I don't like the way I did that. So the direction I did that. So we're going to pull that out real quick and do the same thing, but we're going to come from the other direction. That's the nice thing about this is that you can't always undo it. I believe I did the, the one from the cast on edge, the cast on when you're weaving that in multiple times just to get that right. Right. Exactly. So I'm going to go back through this way. And now we've kind of got mm, these two yes. gathered. So I like that. That's good. We've got the foundations. So now I'm just going to go 
and try and weave this in as much as I can kind of back through here. Or because we have the advantage of doing this before the whip stitch, we can weave in ends through here. So I can just stick my needle down into the work, making sure it goes all the way through. And I can pull that out here, pulling it taut. And then of course, I'm gonna go back here and see how everything's looking to make sure I like it. And maybe if I'm being extra picky, I would change this so that that isn't revealed, but we still have time. So <laughs> we can go in through here and then we can start weaving in ends like we would with a garter stitch normally. So we can go up through here. I'm gonna kind of go over to the side like that. And then I always forget how to do this. We go down like so, nope, I went up the wrong one. I get my smiles and frowns mixed up. Oh, you know how it is. All right, so there we go. We're gonna go around, follow this one right here, and then go down like so. And then we can go thread the needle right underneath here, just like that. Now this, we did demonstrate this in our um, prism blanket knit along, and we also have a tutorial as well. And it might be a little easier to see that there because this is a quite a fun yarn and might not be as clear for demonstrating, but just showing how we weave in our ends. And that. So I would do this pretty far down so it feels nice and secure. And you could also, if you wanted to, you could go back and forth. Since this is a little loose, I would probably go back and forth, maybe even poking this through here again, I could kind of tie and tack that one down and go through there. Mm -hmm. This is really knitter's choice, follow your instincts and really make sure that that's secure. And then um, if, you're, if you've are if sewed it all in and you're unhappy with it, another little trick is you can take some scrap yarn that you might have, and you could also just wrap it around here. <laughs> this is like a fun little oh, trick I'll I've, use. I've seen that um, before tassels, you know, yeah. the through hats and just then cinch it back in through the middle so that you can't even see it. Right. That conceals everything. So if you're really not happy with it and you think that might be fun, you could do that too. You could also do a coordinating color there. So I think Jaja was going to talk a little bit more about weaving in ends before yeah. the whip stitch. I don't know if there's actually yeah. something I wanted to show just because it came up earlier and I got to the end of my thing to bind off. So I wanted to go ahead and um show that yeah. some because we they were someone was asking about the the last two stitches. So I oh, actually perfect. got to that point. Oh, so you're amazing, Josh. As Thank if you. I was binding <laughs> off. No, no worries. I'm glad somebody asked because I couldn't, I thought I remembered and then I I realized I did it differently. So I just bound off a stitch on my right hand. So we've got two stitches left here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do you're just gonna do kind of the knit two together for that and then you don't bind these two off there you go so I actually do use my the third needle the double pointed needle and then that's what I use for my cable cast on for the hanging loop so just to yeah. answer that question so it's or you can switch to back to your your uh circular needle at that point yes too. whatever you prefer yeah or you can use them both. You can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you you went all the way to the end of that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's the benefit of the knit along. Yeah, here. I got it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put some stop first there for now. But I just wanted to talk about how you it's a good idea to try and weave in those ends before the whip stitch. So <laughs> let's make it a little bigger so you can really see the whole thing. So we've got oh, it's, it's a big boy. I feel like every time I make it, we were talking about this earlier, but every time we make another one, it gets bigger <laughs> because we're just, we're used to the pattern now. So we're just a little bit more looser more, tension or just yeah, enjoying just it. Like, oh, I'm just, I just got this knits and pearls. But, um, so when we started here, this is the tail from the, um, oh yes, we still have to talk for counting garter rows. We will get back to that. Yeah. Um, I'll demonstrate that. So this is my tail. There are multiple tails. So there's one tail here that I definitely recommend before you get to your whip stitch. I haven't done my loop, but there's going to be the tail from the loop, which I recommend just doing it right away. Normally I let a, pro a little tiny barbell. <laughs> yeah, it's like my weights. Yes. For my, <laughs> How funny. For my wrist exercises. Um, but you'll have one from your loop. So I recommend doing the loop one first. Just get it out the way so you can enjoy it sooner rather than later. 
Um, where does this one come into play? When you do the fold, it's going to be in the middle. So remember, I thought I was going to have a good idea of, oh, I'll leave a really long tail and I can do the whip stitch with that. You can, unfortunately, because it'll be in the middle here. So it's best to do the whip stitch all the way at one and then the other. So just do this before that whip stitch so that you can put it on the long side and you don't have to poke it in. And then once you do actually have the whip stitch, you're gonna have a loose end on one end here and one end here. Um, that's gonna be a little awkward to weave in. Margaret's gonna kind of show you um, to make your own tiny barbell. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> sharing, sharing that. Um, but you're gonna, gonna poke it in. I like to poke it in at the end. Once I finish weaving in the ends in, just almost like if you're making a stuffed like animal, you just want to make sure you can, there's a trick to kind of poke it in to make sure it doesn't come out afterwards. And I haven't had an issue with any of the ones I've had coming out at all. So yeah. if you want to go ahead and show that, Margaret, um, yeah. and then we can talk about the, the counting the garter rows, yeah. um, which would be kind of on the needles, but kind of up here. Just, I think that's what people wanted to see, just to see how many rows you're in. Right, then you know what? I'm going to do that before we do whip, whip stitch. Just so oh, yeah, actually, see yes, it all right idea. here. Sooner rather than later. Okay. I'm going to remove spotlight just so this is as big as it can be. And I also saw a question about cher my cherry tomato does not look as bright as yours. Yours almost yeah. looks like the image of bright watermelon. I have some extreme lights going on over here. Yeah. Sure it's super clear. Probably we have wide. very bright lights. On um, it's, but, but both colors are beautiful and bright and summery. So, <laughs> um, okay. So counting garter rows. I like to use a needle or um, the end of a pen um, just to really make sure I'm precise here. But what you're going to want to do is kind of dig in and separate. So you'll see that a garter ridge, this is a garter ridge right here. It has um, frowns and smiles. I couldn't think of the word. Um, frowns and smiles to kind of create this like uh, ridge here that's raised. Um, and you'll see if you follow the um, smiles and frowns up and down, you'll see that there are stitches that are below them. So like there's there's this one right here and that's kind of this guy, like you can kind of just trace the yarn. Um, so you'll see a garter ridge is essentially two rows. So you have one up here and two right through here. So this, this is like one row right here. You can follow all those. It's hard to see in this yarn because this is not a consistent color, but it is in person when you're maybe not under such bright lights, <laughs> you might be able to see a yeah. little bit better. Um, can a moderator add a link to the, the gauge tutorial? Yes, that um, would be great. I feel like that's the best. Um, there's a really nice hard ruler where you can see how to count garter stitch specifically. Um, yes. Rows, and I think that would be the most helpful. Absolutely. White, clear, white, yeah. white yarn. Yeah, but... You can, for a rough estimate, you can look at the garter ridges like two, four, six, eight, and keep going like that. Or you can count in here, you do one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Um, and continue up, up the way. Okay, but anyway, we were talking about the whip stitch. So let's go yes. over, <laughs> let's go over there. So we we've have our construction. Let me show that one more time because it's just super helpful. We just, I'm, going to turn this so that the hanging loop is at the top left and the three needle bind off edges here open is here and just open like a book and there we go you kind of pull it and set it and if you have um removable stitch markers you could use those even just to connect the sides like mm. pins when sewing for example just to help keep everything together um it's not needed but it's just if you like to have some extra help you know, an extra hand, literally, <laughs> you can have that. Um, but to work the whip stitch, what you're going to do is pick a side and put the point down at the bottom. And we're going to zoom in here. And now I've cut a completely separate thread of uh, yarn, a, a tail, I'm sorry. And we, we thread oh, that on. Something I want to think about for, because yes. I had this issue. I wasn't sure for whip stitch. This is my first time doing, doing whip stitch and I wasn't yeah. sure how long to cut it. So what I did was I left a little tail about six to eight inches, and then I did three times the length of that section, that opening. Yes. And that's, I've had enough every time One, when two, I did three. that. I've left almost four here, but 
yeah, you can I do like four to be sure. safe, but you'll yes. have more than enough to finish it that way. Yes. But yes. So what we're going to be doing now is using, making use of the cable cast on. So this is the cable cast on edge. And excuse me, you can see that there's these nice, um, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't wiggle. There we go. There's these nice little, uh, almost like C-shaped or just like scallops. There's one right here, here, here. Um, running all the way up and down. So this is, you'll be sewing these together essentially. And because there is an even cast on number, we know that this is, they're evenly matched. There's, you know, pretty much no matter where you divide this loop, it's going to be half and half. Be a pair, yeah. <laughs> yes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start, we're always going to, attack isn't the right word. We're always gonna start from the right side and flow through to the left. We're always gonna start over here and pull through on this side. So no, I'm gonna- like attack. Okay. Yeah, attack from the right <laughs> side. <laughs> um, I like to leave one at the bottom untouched. And that means we'll leave one at the very top untouched. Um, that way you have like kind of a gap to cover over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our needle right through here. And this is a bit of a knitter's choice moment. You can decide how many loops to insert it through, but just kind of trusting your needle, let it find itself through, you're good. So we're gonna insert there and then we're gonna find its pair on the left. Remember we're leaving one at the bottom as kind of a point. So its pair would be right here. Let me grab my little pointer needle. Its pair would be right here because this one's going to go for this guy and so on and so forth. So this is the one we're leaving alone. This is what we threaded through. This, not this one, this one is where we're going to uh, thread our needle through. So let's go do that. We're going to go from under and through. Now you might have to kind of wiggle with it. Make sure you get the right amount of strands on there. There we go. Okay. And what we're going to do is just pull pull our yarn through. And then I like to leave a tail here for us to weave in later. So there's, yeah, there's tail. Nice. There's my tail. Yep. Very nice. So now what we're going to do is like I said, we're going to start from the right. So we're not going to go back this way. We're going to go from this side back over again. So we can kind of tug on our tail to see, okay, that's the one we went through. So next one is this stitch right here. So I'm going to insert my needle into that loop there. And then over here, we're gonna see where this guy's coming out. We're gonna go the one right up above it. So this is the one we just went through. Here's the one we're gonna go into again, or into next, I'm sorry, not again. Yes. And we can go right through there and you can see, all right, do we wanna grab both loops? There's kind of two loops there, very clearly there. Or do you want to grab just one loop? Knitter's choice, up to you. I would just, whatever you do, stay consistent. So always do that one. Um, whatever you chose. So we're going to pull that through, make sure our tail doesn't get tangled in here. And there we go. We're on our way. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the next one. Just follow it up right here. And the next one, you can see right where this guy came out. So we're going to go into the one right above it. And I was, I decided I'm only grabbing one. So I'm kind of leaving that other loop down below and then pulling through. And you'll just do this all the way up and then leave a similar tail at the other end to uh, secure. And this creates a nice seam all the way through. Let me show you my finished one. Right here, you can see this is the whip stitch uh, seam right here. And then if you're wondering what this is over here, this is where you switch between knits and purls um, when working in the round. This is completely normal and it's just part of the process of switching from knit to purl, but this is the the whip stitch um, seam, just like that. So yeah, that's whip stitch. You go all the way through. Um, when you get to the cast on, like slip knot, uh, knot, I guess you could say, the little bump. Um, yeah, in the middle there. <laughs> yeah, I would suggest using your your best knitting knowledge to kind of navigate around it. So you'll you'll have a familiarity when you're working right here. Like this is the last one on this side, and maybe this is the last one on this side. So you need to match this one with the pearl bump. You could thread it all the way through, or you could grab just like part of the bump right here, but there are, um, it's pretty easy to conceal this. So that's something, um, just keep on going. And then, um, yeah, 
if you want to get really dedicated and actually like count each one, you can too, but it's definitely not necessary. And then you'll leave one at the very top unworked to be the pair for the one that you left unworked at the bottom, because this is even number, everyone has a pair. So you'll leave that unworked and then you'll have a tail coming out um, on this side to weave in down through here. And then you'll also, um, once you're done weaving in ends, I wanted to demonstrate this just a little bit, but it'll be kind of different because I haven't actually gone through and done the whole seam here. But yeah. what you'll do is you'll thread your, your needle. Imagine this is all seamed. You'll thread your needle into the work and then out the other end. And then what you'll do is you would pull really tight, cut it. Imagine this is all actually woven in over here. You pull it really tight, cut it. And then when the tension kind of evens back out, this end that's cut will be hidden inside the work. So just like with making um, stuffed animals, like Jaja was saying, yeah. you can conceal that end by kind of pulling it against the work, cutting it, and then kind of loosening it back out so that the end just gets trapped inside. You can also, if it's being tricky, I use the the dull end of the tapestry needle to just kind of <laughs> just yes, <pull> it <laughs> kind inside. of stick it back in there. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but okay. yeah, I think that is all of our demonstrations. So yeah, we're gonna know we're already at. I said an hour before, but I, yes. I, I think it actually tends to be an hour and a half. I apologize. We have a lot to cover. <laughs> now it's the Q and A section, and then show and tell if we have anybody here. Yes. So if you um, have any questions. Um, feel free to pop them in the chat um, if you haven't already, and we can go through them. Yeah, so I'm going to go, we have some questions already ready to go, so I'm going to go okay. ahead and answer the ones we can, well, yeah, answer the ones we can. So yeah. the first one, um, has anyone made one with stripes or one where the turn where they turn into two different colors, different triangles or different colors? Um, we've seen some really cool ones where people um, use a self-changing yarn um, yeah. or scraps that they have. I saw somebody, actually a member on the team that had multiple that they made and then they just used all the scraps from their sun shower cotton to make different ones. That was a really pretty version. Um, there isn't an easy way to make it two tones, say like different colors on each side. Um, but if I think about it, I will let you know the next time. Yeah. <laughs> but for now, that's that's not something that would be easy to do. I would also be mindful of when you change colors. So let's say you're gonna do a stripe. Um, I would do that on a knit row instead of a purl row or a round, yeah. I'm sorry, so that the seam is hidden on the, the inside. But yeah. Um, oops, there is my AC. Um, is one skein big enough to make this a little bigger? Um, yes. <laughs> yes, in short, yes. But there yes. is a long answer here. <laughs> yes, um, there is it to make it a little bigger. I feel like each of us puts it. Margaret had a tempting amount, you said, you described yes. it as to yes. make another. Um, yes. you'll, use about, you'll use about three quarters of a single skin um, for this on average. Um, so there's enough to make it a little bit bigger, but there, there is a lot more math involved, which we'll probably talk about more than next time in the next new Zoom and Knit. That's where we reserve modifications, special things we found. So we'll talk about that more then. Yeah, there's a lot of math because you have to uh, make sure the amount of amount of knitting you knit or amount of fabric you make in that like initial loop is big enough to fold over into the final shape. So if you change the cast on amount or if you work more, sometimes they they don't meet correctly. Yes. Um, um, another important question, which I thought would come up, can you knit it flat? Yes. Short answer. Yes, you can knit this flat. I feel yes. like the first time I did it, I was not feeling the alternating the knits and the pearls. It's basically stocking it flat. <laughs> but um, after a while, it was it was faster. But if you do want to knit it flat, it's perfectly fine. You would just have an extra end to weave, like to seam um, at yes. the end. Um, so that that's the main difference, which you could do a whip stitch for that as well. So you can just have a whip stitch on both sides. Yes, <laughs> you totally could. But this this seam right here is you where automatically. Yeah. Yes, that is where you're changing between knits and purls. So that would be the seam you'd have to sew up um, if you were to knit this flat. That's helpful to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then this other one, this seems like this might be a little more of a big technical question. I think we'll save this for next time. Um, it's about adjust, adjusting a modification. So okay, I'll leave that for now, just because I think that's a big one. Yep. And if, if you guys have any questions, 
like in general, we're always here over email, knit along at prosoho.com, customer service at prosoho.com, especially for the more technical questions. Email tends to be a really good format for that. So we can give really detailed and um, helpful, you know, information responses. So, yeah. I feel like people are really kind of getting ready to go in the chat. So yes. I don't know if we're going to have a lot of show and tell today, but if anybody wants to raise their hand, this is your time to do it. Yes. <laughs> we have some instructions that we can pop in the chat. If you don't know how to raise your hand, um, and if we see, we can bring you on up. Yep. But Okay. It looks like we have a few. Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, for now, I'm going to do some ones that I haven't seen before, just so we have some new faces. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to start with um, S. Herman. That's okay. I'm going to ask to unmute you. I just okay. I just started all over again. Oh, oh no! <laughs> did you, because did you twist twisted. your stitches? Oh, yeah, no. no. <laughs> but that's all right. I got them. I'll cast on again. <laughs> How many rounds have you made it into the project? Because if it's only one, you, you do have that special you know, collect $200, you can flip it around. And <laughs> I tried that and that's okay. what I had done, but oh, I decided but it, it was worth enough. trying to straighten it out. I had probably four or five rounds in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's enough, but, <laughs> enough. but well, I love uh, the colors you're using. <laughs> yes. It looks like so much fun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, well, I hope your next, next round through goes a little bit better. No twisting. And, um, We'll remember the first attempt fondly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but awesome. thanks for hopping on the spotlights. Yes, thank Next you. Next up, we have Colette. Let's ask to unmute. For anyone Hello. that's not aware, we usually have to actually request to unmute, so then you can start talking afterwards. Yes. Okay. There we go. Hi. Hi. My name's Colette. I'm in Germany. It's kind of late at night, and Whoa. I already started this scrappy one. Oh, how fun! Oh, there you go. I didn't have any yarn, and I knew I wanted to do this tonight, so I um, I bought this today. But Ooh. I already started using up all my scraps just as <laughs> they came, and I'm really, I think it's gonna look kind of fun. Yeah, oh, cool. Ooh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> so get rid of some scraps and have some yes. fun. I'll use it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? No, that's really oh. cool to have a visual of how it um, opens up if you're using a different yarn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Aww. next time I'm in the States, I'm going to stock up on some good Pearl Soho yarn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds like sounds a plan. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for getting along with us. <laughs> Yeah, it's been fun. My yes. first time. Oh, oh welcome. A new one. <laughs> Thank you. We love okay. people joining us. <laughs> Let's see. Next up, we have Terry. Hello. Oh, I love your background. <laughs> joining us from outer space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> people have said that about California before. <laughs> yeah. I've got this going. Um, oh, pretty! The background actually is kind of messing it up. I'll have to hold. Oh, you close. see it in and out though. It's like the maybe in front of you it'll work. Yeah, yeah. The yellow oh, is that the corner on the cup? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. so fun! <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks really beautiful. It looks like you're probably about halfway through the loop there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't measured it yet, so I don't know exactly how. But it looks like it's. I don't know. It looks like I'm. At about an inch, actually about an inch and a half, maybe oh, just shy of two inches. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You well, you've got two inches. It's it just steamrolls. <laughs> yeah, you just keep going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. it's something I can do with an injured wrist too. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's good to know that it's just like a, maybe the bigger needle size. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not stressing it for something. I'm. Glad I can do because like anything with smaller needles is a little too much twisting and turning. Same. Yeah. I also <laughs> yeah. feel like as much as I love just garter, just straight, I feel like the variation actually helps to give it some less repetitive motion. Um, yeah. So that's good. Well, thank you yeah. for showing us. Thank you so much for joining us from so far away too. <laughs> 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 oh wow more oh. okay we have some more that's uh i think i saw olga on there jaja i do i see her too just popping up let's see yes and that spotlight hi olga 
Hello. Let's see. Hi, hi, hi. hi. <laughs> I always join their lives and then I'm always shy to talk. Oh, oh, really? So I was like, I'm doing this today. She's being brave. <laughs> we love it. I think it's yeah, only the second my... time. Uh, I always join you. I just well, never the second time you've come up. Like, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have this and I Ooh. started it yesterday and it's a really quick knit. I mean, mm -hmm. I do knit pretty quickly, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. like three, four hours, I think. Mm -hmm. So I have this one. And then I also <laughs> have this one. Oh, because I have, and then, but this one I didn't start yet. And then I also have this color, the grayish. Ooh, yes. Yeah, so I left I the, the cutest one for, for last. So oh. yeah, I'm going to have three of them. Um, and then I probably, I don't know, I think I'm going to have enough to make one more from like the leftovers from O3. Mm, so it's yeah, going to be like strikes. striked. Yeah. I love yes. that. <laughs> That's it. That would be yep, so fun. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yes, yes. thank you. Thanks We're so joining. glad you're getting along with thank us. <laughs> thank you. Bye. A couple more. More people joining than I, I thought. I'm very. Let's see them all. This is so fun. <laughs> Oh, it's not letting me, um, it's not letting me spotlight oh. right now. Are you trying to add C D C D A E L? Oh, yes. Uh, we I forgot. We're not able to do it if your video is not already showing. We've realized that in the past. So if you put the video on first, then I think we can spotlight you. You can do a video where you don't show anything if you're not comfortable showing. That is an option, too. Yeah, it's like, looks like C D C D A L and Joan's iPad. I'm gonna bring up Amy in the meantime. Is that okay. Hi, there Amy. We go. <laughs> oh, I think oh, you're muted. <laughs> Almost there. There, there we, we go. go. So better, sorry. Um, but yeah, Hi, so I love the color, and I have to say, this is such a great summer work because it's so mm. little. You're not yes. Really while you're working on it, I just yes. finished a blanket that took forever, and I was so sweaty the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> That's <was> right. <laughs> And also but the yeah. cotton, it can absorb that sweat. It yes. Would. <laughs> they, would, they would just appreciate that in their blanket. But, yes. <laughs> but yeah, this has been great. And I, I just love this theme. Oh, awesome. Me too. It looks yeah. so beautiful. I love your potholder. It looks great. And I wanted to say that I love Colette's idea about using the scraps to, because I always have like these yeah, leftovers and don't know what to do with them. Right. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, I want to use all of my art. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Get but it all out there. Thank you very way. much. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, it looks like um, it's working for Joan's iPad. Oh, there we go. Let's ask to unmute. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hello. There we go. Hi, we can hear you. <laughs> oh, yes. look, it looks beautiful. <laughs> so pretty. It came out yes. so cute. Yes. The only That's thing such is, a great I color. was so excited about doing this for the first time with the Zoom. I have to pull it out because I ended up twisting it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh no. So you I got a twist in it. Too? Yep. <laughs> oh. No, that's well, okay. But it's yeah. fine. It, you yeah. can do it quickly again. It's, yes. it's yeah. nice because you don't have to recap. Um, it doesn't take as long if you do have to redo it, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Really too. We're so glad you're enjoying it, even if there's a little twist <laughs> along the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks bye for thanks for <laughs> thank showing. you yes thank you oh we have a, another one more one last la thing we have tracy is our last one hi tracy you. there we go i am way behind oh. I have my ball <laughs> that's and okay I have, a, I have a stockpile of this because i'm making um towels kitchen towels from one of the patterns Mm -hmm. So I've got purple, blue, green, red. I've just about every color. Oh, just the one of each. I've just been grabbing <laughs> one of each, and then I have a stockpile of the white too to add on to the towel. So nice. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I was gonna do. Just make some extra towels, with just the white in the middle, and scraps at the end. I think just to make all a little together. basket for somebody to get well basket and put them all in. I thought that would be a little right. Project. I love that. <laughs> yes, we have our hopscotch hand towels and the color field hand towels, I believe, and the sun shower cotton. Maybe our moderators yes. can put links to those, but those are great patterns if you want to make yeah. use of extra sun shower cotton. 
That's mm -hmm. such a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Guys, it's been great. We'll see how many you have finished by the next time. Yes. <laughs> uh, see. I have a sick puppy. So I oh. I had I've been working on my prison blanket still. Mm -hmm. I'm halfway done now, finally. But yeah. um, by Christmas, hopefully it'll be completed. Yep. But I have a sick puppy and she likes to lay on my on the blanket while I'm knitting and I'm I can't have her up on the blanket. You can't. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm working on these. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, that's cute. I feel like yeah. we should have like a joint, an extra bonus at the end of the year. Let's see if you actually finished your prison blanket. Yes. Oh, really? oh, I'm so behind on that, and that's I was okay. in the other knit along too, and I I had finished one of those before I even got halfway through my prison blanket. Same. That's why those these are the satisfying ones. You just feel so accomplished because they're such quick knits. No. Yes. <laughs> we'll oh. finish together don't worry <laughs> that's right <laughs> thanks for sharing yes thank, thank you. you and happy knitting yes oh, sorry i said that was last one but we actually i forgot i see tina again hi tina there we go <laughs> hi tina let's see there we go i think we can hear you oh wait we can't hear you quite yet i think you need to unmute yourself uh oh on me. There we go. Hi, now we can hear You're you. Good now. <laughs> so I went ahead and I did the rainbow. Oh. So since you did the seven colors, you sent me the seven colors. I started with the, oh. the pink, okay. then the purple. So oh, this beautiful. is the star. Oh, is your... <gasps> Whoa, and I did oh my gosh. seven colors. <laughs> and I went ahead and I finished with the, the red because yes. what I wanted was when it opened, mm -hmm. I wanted the red Ow. loop at the <laughs> so top. So smart. So it's like the rainbow goes <laughs> this excited. way and the rainbow goes that way. But when you fold it like the book, yes. the yep. other side does the rainbow from the outside in. So I so love smart. this pattern. Oh, <laughs> It is so cool. That is such oh, a clever idea. the reason idea. I figured it out was because for me, 21 ridges is yeah. five inches and there are oh. seven colors divided by three i can just do three three ridges three ridges three ridges and i get 21 i do my bind off my tail that and i so have smart. my rainbow <laughs> you must be an engineer <laughs> that is so smart <laughs> oh, i have a question and since you did and three did it, can you see the um you were sometimes changing on the oh. um Yes, can I'm I changing exactly closely? what you said yeah. on the knit. Okay. So on the mm. knit, when I change it, because you know there's so much white, white in color. Yeah. In I mean, basically, well, if you looked really close, yeah, you can't really I mean, I probably it. could figure it out. But I just said, you know what? That's the back side. This is the front side with the uh, ridge. When I hang the pot holder. Yeah. The, you know, if you look close, you can see it, mm -hmm. but there's so much color going on. It's just happy. <laughs> yeah, it just yes. adds to the effect. I love it. Happy well, thank best you for, for sharing it. that. I know. Thank, thank you. you for sharing me. <laughs> yes. yes. Thanks for joining. Aww. So I love this pat pattern. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you do. We yes. love it too. <laughs> I think, is there a way we could try and get CDAEAL up here? Mm -hmm. I see their hand raised. Um, I'm not able to spotlight them. Do you see the option on the, if you try under the, the I extra things? Can't see it, but perhaps we could ask to unmute and just see. We can try that. Yes. Let's see. Are you? Can we hear from you? <laughs> Let's see. I just don't want to leave anyone overlooked. Yeah. Oh, I don't think it it's working. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can try it next time. We'll keep an eye out for that yes. game for the next Zoom. And at the very least, send us a picture of your potholder via email or if you had a yes, question. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I think we are that, ready to close it up. Yes, that about <laughs> wraps it up. That's like a crash course and everything you need to know for Super the double check potholder. <laughs> yes. Um, our next Zoom in it will be on August 31st at 4 p.m. EST. So... July 31st to August 31st, nice little month. Um, I believe that's a Thursday. Is yes, it? I believe it's a Thursday, 4 p.m. Easter. Um, yep. We should have a link in the chat for that. Um, yep. Pretty soon it's also on our website, so. Yes. Yeah. And so we're gonna get this meeting uploaded to YouTube as soon as we can. 
just need a little bit of time to edit it and review and then we put our little logo on it and yeah. it'll be added to a playlist we'll have a new playlist just for this knit along and we have one now for each knit along so if you just want to go and view them archives it's it's all it's all there <laughs> yeah and if you're new to our uh knit along zoom and knits um i also want to talk about another fun part of our um, knit alongs, which are the giveaways. We, your oh, yeah. eligible participants are automatically entered for our giveaways upon signing up. Um, but to get automatically, um, and the, the grand prize, which we'll announce at the next Zoom, is a thousand dollar Pearl Soho gift card. So that's pretty exciting. Um, mm -hmm. We also have along the way giveaways. And to gain an extra entry to the giveaways, um, you can upload a picture to our website, to our landing page, or you can post um, on Instagram with the hashtags hashtag Pearl Soho K-A-L or hashtag Pearl Soho double thick potholder. There's no hyphen in that one. Um, and you can also email us a picture at knit along at pearlsoho.com and that will get you an extra entry um, for the submitted image giveaway. So they're so much fun and we, we enjoyed, you know, getting to interact with you and, you know, see what, what everyone's making. It's so fun. Um, yep. And we monitor both inboxes, both the customer service and me. Pearlsoho.com. I always have trouble saying that. Out loud. <laughs> right. You know, I do it every day. Um, customer service at Pearlsoho.com or knit along at Pearlsoho.com. We have people monitoring both every day of the week. Yep. Um, yep. And as I mentioned before, just want to mention again, we have the one on one project help session. So if you have one of those questions about modifying, you really want to change it, feel free to sign up there or email us and we'll, we'll be happy to take care of you. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to meet with one of us and get to talk one on one about your project. But yes, let's bring back to dancing. Thank you yes. all so much for joining <laughs> us. Thank you for knitting along with us, for signing up for the knit along, downloading the pattern, all of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, tag us on Instagram, and we'll we'll see you next month. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh yes, in a month. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye everybody. Take care. Happy knitting. Yes. Happy knitting. <laughs>